you, thank you, thank you, uh, thank God, because he is awesome. Thank you, Benny, for inviting me. Thank y'all for having me. And uh, if y'all have any wax in your ears, go ahead and take this opportunity to get the wax out <laughs> so that you can hear. All right. Is anybody glad to be here? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody mad about being here? Anybody like, oh, maybe I'm going to call. Anybody in that space? Right, you can be honest. This is a safe space, all right? <laughs> all right. Nobody wants to be like, that. All right. So, uh, like Benny said, I am uh, Jerome Parker. Uh, man, those Camp Elevate days were amazing. And, and I'm so, so proud of you. I want to just take a minute to just honor you and your yes to Jesus. It is so encouraging. Like, uh, man, like, I can show y'all some pictures of Cam with Benny and the little skinny dude. Uh, man, but he, he's always had a heart. Uh, for Jesus, and so uh, just seeing this this type of gathering happen is, is truly amazing and truly honor. So thank you for your yes. And I just want to say to this group, for all of you that are here, uh, before I get started, God has some really, really, really what we would call big, but I mean that's God, so it's not really big. But He has some stretching for you all. Yeah. Some stretching. Okay. So. My encouragement to you is we, we sang we a song, uh, I give you my yes, right? Like, don't let that just be words. Like, when you give him your yes, you got to be in a whole lot above, like 100%. Mm -hmm. No half step. Yeah. Not maybe. No. If it's yes, then let it be yes. And I'm telling you, he's going to do some amazing things in your life and in your family's life. And if everything that God wants to do in and through you is bigger than just you, it's more than just about you, all right? Yeah. So just, just start thinking like that. It's, it's exciting. I can say a whole lot more, but man, we can be here until uh, next Thursday. <laughs> and I'm sure y'all have stuff to do. So let's bow our domes and close our eyeballs so that we can pray <laughs> over the word. Father God, show us what it looks like to be true lovers of you, to be true reflections of your heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. But that's probably one of the shortest prayers I ever heard. Huh? <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought it was going to be here, but praise God. Okay, so, For the Love of God is a new series, and um, we're going to get into it. How many of y'all are married? Anybody married in here? No married? Am I home here? Oh. <laughs> you see how he raises it like he raises it slow. Like, 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 like. All right, so don't mind if anybody moved up. Y'all, uh -oh. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. No, never fail. Remember the camp days. Like, whenever we're in a group of, or in a group of people, and I ask if anybody's moved up, even if people are. They don't raise their hand. I don't know why that is. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the options open. I don't want to raise my hand. Maybe you're all over there with the crunching joints. She looks a little bit down there. Right, right. All right, I feel you. I feel you. Right. 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 Right there, just hold your finger right there. Cause we go like, if you if you a Jesus follower for real, we gonna we gonna flip through this Bible. So I got old school Bible, I got a paper Bible. Y'all got your scriptures or your scrolls or you know what I'm saying. Some of y'all, if I got tattooed scriptures on you, like wherever you gotta find Ephesians, just find it. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't gotta find my phone, but I got I got a shot for right here. Like, you know, like, right. That's you. Do what you gotta do, man. Do what you gotta do. All right. So. While you holding Ephesians chapter 5, I want you to go to John 13. John 13, and we're going to start at verse 34. And this is Jesus speaking, and he says this. He's talking to his disciples, all right? So let me, let me paint this picture for you real quick. He's talking to his disciples, and this is, this is right after they eat the Last Supper, and uh, he washes their feet, and, and you know, a lot, of, a lot of things are transpiring within this chapter. And then he comes like towards the end of the chapter, verse 34, he says to his disciples, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. 
that you also love one another. Verse 35, by this, by what? By the love that you show one towards another. By this will all know that you are my disciples or my followers, for if you have if you love one another. So the way that the world knows that we are his disciples is based upon how we love one another. Now, we we we, we, we talking about love and we talking about the love of God, and love is vast. The reason why love is vast is because but the Bible says that God is love. Right. Okay? So let me just let me just set your mind straight about what love is and what love ain't. Everybody say what love ain't. What love ain't. ain't. Alright. Love ain't a feeling. Right. Well, that's like, it's love. summertime right now, like, right. so we don't gotta use proper English. Like I'll get away with saying ain't. Alright? <laughs> so you're not gonna get in trouble, I promise, I promise. Alright, so love ain't a feeling. Mm. How many of y'all ever felt happy before? Ooh. Raise your hand if you felt happy. Raise your hand if you felt sad. Right? Raise your hand if you felt mad. Right? You have all these different feelings. Like you felt happy when you got a bonus on your check. You felt sad when your team lost. Maybe they got swept. Any Lakers fans? No. Yeah. <laughs> you felt sad when that happened. Right? You felt mad when the dude that you was trying to holler at was hollering at your cousin. You like, oh. <laughs> So, so how many of y'all 
don't believe that God is a just God. Yeah. yeah. He's a God of justice, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if God is your dad and he tells you if you come home with a D, you're going to get grounded and I'm going to put this leather belt on your rear end. Ooh, oh, come on. Right? Yeah. So God says, if you come home, he's your dad, you come home with a D, you're about to get a buck open and you're going to be grounded. Okay? Now, if you bring home a D and you don't get grounded and you don't get a buck open, wouldn't God be unjust? Like he told you what was going to happen before it happened. He said, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. So because he's a God of justice, he has to adhere to his word. And this is a little bit of a sidebar, but you need to understand the nature of God. And I know y'all talked about this week a little bit, but you need to understand the nature of God. So people say, well, if there's a God, why is all this stuff happening? Go ask him. Mm -hmm. God said... The day that you eat of this tree, you will surely die. In other words, you're going to start the process of you being cut off from me. You're going to be cut off from the giver of life. You're going to be cut off from the, from the author of life. Mm. And you open the door to the author of death. Mm. So because of a decision that Adam made, and because God is a just God, he's a good, good father, right? Yeah. He's a good, good, I can't say it, but he's a good, 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 good father, father, right? I changed it. Don't you hear my, my version? <laughs> You're a good, good daddy. <laughs> That's who you is. That's who, all right, all right. All right, something. So, so look, so God is a just God. He told Adam, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. He forewarned him. Adam did it anyway. Like, he probably wasn't even hungry. Like, he probably wasn't even hungry. Like you got all these other trees going, you eat nothing. I'm hungry. But because of his decision, God has to adhere to his word. He's a just God. He's the same God that he was in the Garden of Eden that he is right now. He's a just God. There's things that God has told you specifically in your life. Do this, don't do that. If you do this, here's what's going to happen. If you don't do this, here's what's going to happen. And you made your own decision, and now you got to live with it because God is a just God. Amen. Yes. Ooh, it's so quiet. I like it when it's quiet. All right, now, you should still be in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. All right, now, um, I, I want to I submit to you, actually actually go to Ephesians chapter 4, that, that love carried out, it culminates into something like, so in, in this context of love, we would really classify marriage as an ultimate expression of love. Because marriage is a type of shadow of Christ and his church. Right? So what Adam lost in the garden, Jesus came to restore. Jesus said, you know what, Adam, you messed up, but I'm the second Adam. I'm the one who's going who's gonna to fix it. God swears by himself, comes to the earth, wrapped in flesh in, in the form of Jesus Christ, dies for our sins because we couldn't pay the penalty, right? And the Bible describes it as that he's the bridegroom coming for his bride. Yeah. Yeah. So marriage is not just some, oh, I think I'll just get married. And it's just, no, no, no. Marriage is a, a, literally a reflection of the covenant that God can cut with himself wow. for the salvation of mankind. So every time somebody throws a bouquet or they throw the garter belt or you go cut the cake and eat the cake and do all the dances and say the vows, every time that happens, it is an, it is an expression of the love of God for humanity. Right. It's not to be taken lightly. So whenever that time comes for you to get married, you have to look at this thing, right? You have to look at whoever is going to be my wife, her and I together are going to express the love of God to the entire world. It is, a, it is a type and a shadow of what God, of God's heart towards mankind. Reuniting, reconnecting to express true love, unconditional love. That's why the Bible say, for better or for worse. In skinny and in fat. Based upon whether 
you deserve it or not. And let me, yeah, if you are a guy, if you're a man, if you're a man, if you're a man, listen, the Bible instructs you to give yourself to your wife like Christ gave himself up for the church. Right. To love your wife like that. Mm. To death. That's why part of the Bible say, till death do us part. Whenever I do weddings, I say the death and I say the TH real loud so everybody, death. <laughs> so you know like this thing is really serious. Yeah. And then wives, you're instructed to submit yourselves to your own husband. A wife's duty is to love her husband or, or is to respect her husband. That's to tell wives to love their husband. It says to respect and honor her husband. And the husband's job is to love his wife. Like Christ loves the church. Now, some people, they get off the boat and they say, uh, submit. Right? And then men take it out of context and say, well, you the woman, so you're supposed to submit to me. I'm the man. I'm the man. You're supposed to submit to me because I'm the man. But, 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 you must read that scripture. <laughs> Search 
history. Oh, oh. I'll tell you if you love yourself or not. I know, I know. The super snug in here. Right? Right? So, so this week, I've been going, like, fellas, this ain't loving yourself. Oh, come on.
verse 31. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, with all evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice. Wow. Verse 32. And be kind one to another. Ooh. We got people that's not even trying to be like, I love you, Jesus. <laughs> but I'll pop a cap in you. <laughs> what, what, what is that? We get out of church flipping people off on the freeway. Oh. How? How is it? And be kind one to another. Listen, watch this. Watch this. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. That's hard. That part. That's good. That makes you stretch. <laughs> Tender heart. Some of y'all. Oh, you, you heard what she said about my mom, right? <laughs> like, this is girl stuff. You heard what she said about my mom. <laughs> Whoa! What, what happened to you? <laughs> like, the Bible tells us to be tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ has forgave us. Verse 5, or, or chapter 5, verse 1, therefore be imitators of God. How can we imitate somebody that we don't spend time with? How can we imitate him and we don't listen to his voice? We're not reading his word. How can we be expressions of love if we're not spending time with the one who is love? Can I ask you a question? Yes. If if I have water, let me stop. It's now, what's in this bottle? Water. Now, if you touch the water, what's going to happen? It's going to get wet. Whatever part of your body touches the water is going to get wet, right? right? So if I throw it. <laughs> she said, oh, no. Her whole life left me. Maybe you've been in a relationship and it didn't work out. Or maybe you're in this place where you're like, 
man, God, I just, you know, you know what I want. I like, I want him to be like this and like, you know what I'm saying, and like love you and you know, all like you got your little checklist. Anybody, okay, don't raise your hand. I ain't gonna put y'all on the spot. But you probably got your checklist. Maybe you like wrote it out, maybe it's in the notes tab in your phone, or maybe you like actually physically wrote it out, maybe you like tattooed it like when, when, when my husband come on, it's gonna be like crank, crank, right? Like you got a list, maybe it's just in your mind. Right. You got a list of all the things that you want this spouse to be. But what are you? What does your life look like? What does your submission to God look like? Right. We sang that song, It's Your Breath in Our Lungs, so I pour out. Like, I was singing about that song, It Is His Breath in Our Lungs. Right. So how dare we not use it to glorify Him? Come on. Yeah. It's His breath in my, like, you're breathing because of me. Like, if I was God, you're breathing because of me. How dare you not go share the good news of the gospel with that person that's on the street dying and cooking in the Phoenix sun? Is your breath in my room? Like, what are we doing? It is his breath in your lungs. So why are you using his breath in your lungs to cuss her out? Tell us that he had like a set residence. 
But let me, let me tell you also what scripture says. If Jesus had a treasurer, he wasn't broke. Come on. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Be vulnerable. Raise your hand if you have a treasurer. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> right? You don't have a, you're not broke if you got a treasurer. Like, what do you, you need someone in the land to be sick? Okay, we're going to do okay. We're going to do okay. We're going to the corner store, right? And then we're going to put like, we're going to put like 15 cents on the Jelly Rancher, the little one, the little one. Don't get that big joint. And then we got like, okay, how much is it? We got like 10 or uh, 45, 35 more cents. Okay, we're going to get Like, no, you don't need somebody to manage you. You got nothing. <laughs> but you just betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Such a good question. He asked, was Judas back in faith? Judas, scripture tells us, he was not only keeping the money, but he was taking some of the money and using it for himself. Wow. So yeah, he was getting paid. He was quicker than a game sign. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? But Jesus, at his last supper in John chapter 13, he still, he washes it, he washes it, this back and talk. He washes all of the disciples' feet. This is what you gotta understand. Back in those days, they didn't have no Air Force Ones, no New Balance, you know what I'm saying? Like they had sandals. And and the, they, they they used horse and buggy and donkeys and all kinds of animals. So in the street, when it rained, the, the horses would have to go. They poop on the on the on the ground. You know what I'm saying? The donkeys poop like so it's poop, is is wet, mud, is nasty. And Jesus, the creator of the universe, wrapped in flesh, gets down on his knees to the dude that he knows is going to betray him and washes his feet. That was a, in that day and time, that was the most lowly act that you could do. That was, a, that was the lowest, like that was the lowest job of any servant was washing feet. Because of what feet went through at that time. So when Jesus said, I give you a new commandment to love one another the way that I have loved you, he demonstrated it. Jesus didn't just talk about it because in the verses before verse 34, he had actually demonstrated how we're supposed to love people. The dude that betrayed you, you're supposed to love him and wash his feet. Wow. The people that's talking about you behind your back, you're supposed to love them. The people that are a different view than you, that say that your whole race is lower than theirs, you're supposed to love them too. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another the way that I love you. If, you don't, or if you're not ready to love like that, you're not ready to be Buddha. Why would God give one of his sons or daughters to you just for you to misuse them, just for you to abuse them, just for you to, to, to spill out the, the inconsistent definition of love that you have that doesn't look anything like him? Why would he do that? If I'm a father and I'm a father, I got four kids. I'm not about to let my daughter marry some dude that don't understand what love is. Hey, Mrs. Parker, I want to, I want to marry your daughter. Where you work at? <laughs> Where you gonna live? Why do you want to marry my daughter? Can you take care of her? Can you take care of her like I take care of her? Can you love her beyond her little stanky, funky attitude that comes up every now and then? Can you love her past that? Yeah. No? Okay, promise. ever ate some a meal that wasn't fully cooked? <laughs> mm. Yeah, steak that's all the way pink and woo. <laughs> Chicken that's pink on the bone. <laughs> mm. I can get some salmon else. You dig it to a pot pie and it's still frozen in the middle? <laughs> yeah, uncooked. 
until we allow the word of God to properly process us and to properly cook us in what love really looks like, we're not ready for a relationship. So just keep cooking. You're going to get there. And when you're fully cooked, man, I, there's, a, there's not many things that's more satisfying than a fully cooked, home-cooked meal. Ooh. Like if I said, Chick-fil-A, you're like, ooh, Chick-fil-A. But if I said, my mama cooking yams and greens and, and, and you know what I'm saying? And like, like she got some, she got some pork chops and she got some chicken and she like, you know what I'm saying? And she been, she been marinating the chicken and like she been, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know how your grandma used to do? Or your great grandma? You gotta say great grandma now because grandma like 14 right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and my grandma like 32. Like, no, you need a little bit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you're not picking Chick Fil A over a Thanksgiving style meal. What type of love meal are you? Are you a snack? Are you an appetizer? Are you an entree or are you a full course? So, ladies, if he's snacking, you better start packing. So listen. Listen, I want to give y'all, I want to give y'all just a quick little nugget that I got from somebody um, that I think will be helpful. This will help you in your relationships, and, and we'll close with this. Three points to help you be successful in your relationship. Because one of the key things in relationship is communication. Okay? Communication. So, number one, speak without being offensive. Speak without being offensive. Number two, listen without being defensive. And number three, leave your opponent with their dignity. Speak without being offensive. Listen without being defensive. And leave your opponent with their dignity. If you're able to do those three things, that will set you up well to be a great communicator and to be successful in any relationship. Because in relationships, it gets ugly sometimes. It gets hard sometimes. And the people that you love, you don't want to cut them up, put them down. Just go off on it like that's that's not an expression of love. Does God do that to us? No. Like, does God say, like this is the 14,000th time I told you to stop putting that in the search bar? You ain't nothing, you ain't never gonna be nothing. I hope your wrist breaking for like you don't do us like that. So as we look at Ephesians and we, we look at how we're supposed to love, how we're supposed to love God, how we're supposed to love ourselves, that will inform us on how we're supposed to love others. And if we do the love thing right, before we get to the ultimate expression of love, we'll have success. Don't mean it's going to be easy. We should have a greater measure of success. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord God, for your word that has penetrated the hearts of your young people here tonight. And I thank you, Lord God, that as we just put our lives in the mirror of your word, that you show us those things that we need to fix, that you show us those things that we need to fully submit to you. And Lord God, give us the courage and the endurance to be able to do that. Show us what it looks like to live our lives fully submitted to you.